Hey guys, hope you're keeping well. So I recently just sat down with Adam Methin of uh, the Fallen State. We speak about the band brand new album Between Hope and Disillusion, which is out now. Go grab your copy of that. We speak about the album itself, the production on it, uh, the songwriting behind it, everything, you know, recording uh, during the lockdown period, everything else they got planned for a main year, including uh, touring with Stone Broken and Mason Hill later this month. Uh, some festival shows, including Heretic Fest and uh, everything else they've got lined up, including their sights on the next album. So make sure you tune in to uh, everything else that Adam had to say right now. And we're joined by Adam of The Fallen State. How are you keeping, mate? I'm good, mate. Thank you very well. How are you? Yeah, good, man. Good to speak to you again. Obviously, last time um, we spoke was when you just joined Fallen State. You've just been announced yeah. as a new singer. You guys have just launched your, your new album to great views. Awesome album, man. You must be... Uh, pleased how this is getting received yeah really proud of it um we didn't know the, re the response obviously this album is a bit of a uh it it's a bit different to the last record that the band put out and uh, mm. you know different to everything else that came before so it's a little heavier and obviously it's vocally it's different because i'm on it but um but yeah like the fans stuck with us and they're all loving it and it's i think it's got a, it's picking up a few new fans that like the heavier stuff as well so it's it's yeah it's it's all good yeah buzzing with the reaction so far so all cool yeah i mean that, that was the first thing that hit me about it when i was listening to it it's definitely got a heavier a darker edge to it than the previous releases but in some ways it's almost like a because of yourself joining ranks it's almost like a reintroduction of you know where fallen state are now and, and what, where you're going moving forward yeah, totally. It's not just that my vocals are on it and make it sound like that because it's not all I can do. It's not just the heavy stuff. Like I come from classic rock as well. So, um, so yeah, the, the band, I think naturally we're going heavier anyway uh, with this record. And um, I, I think my vocals kind of suited it because I'm doing things on this record I didn't even know I could do, like some of the screaming that's really sort of high octane vocal. Like I didn't really know I could do some of that until I was like, okay, let's try this and see how that works on the record. So yeah, it's all come together really nicely. What was it like sort of discovering those elements of your vocal range that you didn't realise were, were there as such until you pushed that barrier? It's good. because it's, it's good to know that you've got so many like weapons in your arsenal that you can go yeah. to. So it was good to, to get on a certain part. It's like, well, let's try something that, that like, is, like, really ramps it up and makes it really aggressive. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And then I sort of, when I thought, okay, I can do it, I tried little bits. I sort of zoned in and I sort of started thinking about how I can make that part of my vocal better. So um, sort of like a, a vocal fry, if you will, sort of thing. And uh, just going through that kind of stuff to get uh, like an extra element to, to put in there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's come out well, so. No, man, it's sounding great. I mean, like I say, look, I mean, I'm a fan of Fallen State, I'm a fan of bands you've been in before. But like I say, this album really does feel like a complete, almost like a debut, debut from a new band in a way, you know, like and then your next, the next part of Fallen State story, which is great. But um, also I know you, you, you yourself live quite a way away uh, from the rest of the guys Does that affect recording at all or do you actually all manage to get into a studio because yeah, physically that's a bit of a nightmare at the minute anyway but uh... well yeah yeah naturally it's um but yeah we're 250 miles apart basically me from the rest of the guys um but in the same sense before even all this we would have just worked on uh like this on zoom or hmm. um we're sending ideas across computers and they were doing that even though they live just a few miles apart hmm. so uh and as far as recording goes they uh, use well I've, I've always used and continue to use uh, Dave Radar Jones um, he used to be in uh, Heaven's Basement uh, he's our producer and he's based up in Manchester so the old band get together there where we, ah, cool. we got to record it anyway so um, so yeah that was fairly easy we just it was just a case of because um, we started the recording of it in 2020 he was like yeah wow. it's, it seems like a long time really long time ago now but um, so yeah, we got together when we could in between lockdowns and stuff and, uh, and got to recording there but again, like I say, a lot of it is done online anyway. So yeah, that's true. Um, so you mentioned Dave, though. that was one of the things I was going to ask who was producing because the production on this is fucking phenomenal, mate. Yeah, man. It's yeah. absolutely massive. Oh, this is the thing, man. This is my first record. This is my actual first album. I've done EPs and singles and stuff. Yeah. Um, but to be able to, you know, in a few years time, look back and think this is the first record I've done and listen to the production of it it's like it's all unbelievable like it's so massive and like the it's not all dave as well because john does a lot our guitarist he um yeah. he does a lot of the the texturing and uh he does a, a lot of the lead work post album like at home mm. um but the entire production of it is is incredible and david like dave david dave does a, a great job of a uh, of like putting it together and helping us sort of an outside perspective as well it's like it becomes a six member sort of thing um but yeah, the, the production is incredible. It's really cool. So, 
Had you worked with Dave before then, or was it just the other dudes who worked with him previously? No, I'd not ever worked with him, but I think I think I'm right in saying he's recorded every single song the band's put out from day one. Oh wow! Uh, um, I think from the first the first EP, uh, mm-hmm. I think he went down to Devon with the guys and recorded in like John's living room or something. And along the along the path of the Fallen State, going through what they do, um, you know, Dave's also gone up in what he does as a producer, sort of thing. So. Yeah. Uh, he's got his own awesome studio now in Manchester, Red City, Red City Recordings, and uh, and yeah, that's it. That's where we go to, and it's uh, it's awesome. I think I'm right in saying when I was speaking to Monk's Lies, they were saying they would recorded with Dave recently. Could be right. Yeah, he does. Um, he's got a lot of bands with him. I think he's done he's done Deaf Blooms, and um, yeah, he's got a load of cool bands that he, he works with, and uh, they all just sound incredible. Like the production that he gets out, I don't know how he does it. He's a magician, but it just sounds incredible. No, I mean like, like I was saying, one of the things that I recognised most about this album instantly was the sort of production on it. It's just there's that big sort of, for want of a better term, cinematic anthemic. Just makes every sound fucking huge. It sounds brilliant. Um, yeah, it does. It, like cinematic's probably probably a right, right the right word for it. I think. Um, I, like I say, it's just a it's just a a case of you know some some bands and some people don't like the really nicely produced stuff. They like the raw stuff, and I love that as well. It's like that's got a place as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, without doubt. Totally, but um, I, I think it's it's nice to we're more of a modern rock band than a, a classic. This new wave of classic stuff, which I love equally, and my old band was that. Yeah. Um, but I think to do the songs that we're doing, it needs to have that production to give it any justice. Otherwise, it's just going to sound a little bit. Sort yeah. of, it, that's not the vibe, basically. So yeah. the production is kind of what we need to do. I think this is it, and like you say, there's, it's uh, you know merit on merit basis, and there's certainly room for the more raw. Like like yourself, I love that side of the production as well, and it just sounds a bit grittier and whatever. But equally, it's Definitely. whatever works and whatever's going to work for you. I mean, it's your band at the end of the day. You know what works for you guys and what doesn't. So yeah, man. that's Tony, man. So with the songwriting side of it, how did that come into play? Was the music already written and you came in, or was it stuff that you'd worked on from scratch? Uh, a lot of it was um, th- th- from scratch. So the the first song we worked on was Gallows, a song called Gallows. Mm. Which, um, if anyone doesn't know, listening, uh, is about Dan, who sadly got diagnosed with lung cancer. He's, uh, you know, he's sort of past all that now. But um, I was going to say, uh, Dan, Dan, that's one thing I wanted to ask. Yeah, uh, he's all good, man. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's all good. Um, but he was saying basically, Gallows was the idea of that song is that he just sort of got the diagnosis on his birthday. So happy birthday, Dan. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, and um, and thought, you know. It felt like a death sentence. It felt like he was just facing the gallows sort of thing. So we wanted to put that across in in the song. And but that was the first one we worked on. And I got that demo um, before I'd even properly joined. Sort of just sort of like, okay, see what you think to this. Mm-hmm. Try and come up with some lyrics and all that kind of thing. And uh, I can remember just being like, like blown away by it. It sort of ripped my head off when I had it on the headphones. I was like, what the fuck? You know, it's, it's so ma- massive. Like. Um, and then we sort of managed to achieve that through the other songs we did as well. And like Gallows is now just, it's just another track. It's, not, it's a great track, but it's like, it's another one on the album because we've yeah. just managed to keep that standard sort of all the way through. Um, but yeah, it was just a process of going back and forth online. Like I said, just writing the songs as we went sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, were there any songs that for want of a better term, we're a struggle to get together because sometimes, you know, you're working on a song and it doesn't work out and then whatever reason it snaps and everything clicks into place. So was everything relatively plain sailing for this record? It seems like a really cohesive record. That's all. That's why I'm always sort of intrigued by the songwriting side of it and that process. Yeah. I'm glad it comes across that way. Um, the, I think the hardest one to actually nail down and get right was nice because it was probably oh. the last one, the last one that we actually wrote. For the How was it? I saw it was the, first one, the first one you came out with you on vocals. Yeah. First one you written together, sort of thing. Yeah, it was, it, was one, it was actually one of the last ones we put together as we went to the studio for the first half of it. Anyway, before we got kicked out for lockdowns and stuff, but um, it was the first. It, we were still. I was basically still trying to tweak the lyrics as we was in the studio. Right. Um, and it was just there was just something, especially the ending. We were just like we can't. I, I, it doesn't sound right. Whatever we was doing, just couldn't couldn't get it down. I mean, when I first started writing the vocals for it. I almost wrapped something over it and I was like, I don't know if wraps the thing to do. I was like, well, I don't either. I'm just trying stuff. Um, but but then, yeah, but it came together really well. And, and Knives was a song that I think, certainly myself, I don't know about the rest of the guys, but I was like, I don't, I'm not even sure about this song. And then when it got done and put together, 
it's got a r- ridiculously good reaction when it came out and it's yeah. like, oh, you know, brilliant. So great. But I felt like, it, I was like, I don't know if this song's ever going to be anything. I don't really know. And then it just all came together just like that on the last day of doing it. So it was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, when Knives came out, obviously you guys sent it across to me and I was all spinning out in the air and we were getting emails and messages the whole time it was playing saying, you know, awesome. obviously, like the, obviously with it being the first uh, track with yourself on it and everything people were wanting to hear was what the, what the next chapter was going to be. And I think it was a, might have been the last one you recorded, but I think it was a good step in the right direction to show people roughly what direction. Obviously, the album's got textures in it and everything else, but uh, you know where you guys were heading, sort of thing. Yeah, cool. It's like, yeah, it's it was it's just strange that that's how how it comes together. Some of the other songs are a little bit like that, thinking like I don't know how certain bits go, and then when it gets to the point where it's like, okay, this song's about done, you question like, how is it ever not that it always seemed like it should have been what it is but it's like how was it ever not that how was it ever this other verse that absolutely doesn't suit it and it's weird how it comes around when it's finished it just feels like it should have always been that and why was there ever an argument that it shouldn't so it's, yeah yeah i know you mean i've been in bands myself off and on over the years and yeah when you're writing and uh especially if you're the one who's coming with the sort of core idea of it and you've got it in your head saying right this is how it is and you know someone goes well we should try that and because it's your core idea or whatever sometimes you know ego comes into play a little bit and you're yeah. like this is this is how it is it's got to be this way and then you're like well we'll, we'll just try it. we'll just try it and then you're like oh shit i was wrong like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely i mean there's definitely some ego in there that gets a bit like no no, no i wrote this part it's got to be this but then there's also some time... things at that level though i don't i think it shows compassion i mean the thing is a difference between passionate about what you're writing and being an egotistical maniac this too you know if yeah, you're going in with if you're giving someone else their parts yeah. and going no there's your bass line, there's your drum lick, you know, you're not deviating from it. That's a bit different story. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if like, ego, like I say, does get in the way, but if it's like, if you're defending your right because you believe it's it's a really cool part or it's a really good lyric or something like that, then that's cool. I think like you, you should defend it if you, you know, believe in it so much. But sometimes I think it gets in the way of when you're just familiar with it because maybe you've been working on a demo for a month or something like that. And all you've heard is that. And then someone changes it because I was like, I've got a new part, so you drop this new part in. And it might be a great part, but people might not like it because they're just not familiar with anything. Well, that's not how it goes. But it's like, well, we haven't finished it yet, so it can go like that. But, you know, and you get a lot of that because it's just like, do you like it or are you just really familiar with it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point, actually, to be fair, mate. Yeah. And yeah, do you like it or is it just what you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think any band over the years would... Uh, so they've been in exactly the same experiences when you're writing, man. It's just part of it, I guess. Totally. So I was uh, songwriting work generally, though, with you guys, obviously, like you say, you're 250 miles apart. Do you ever get, do you get, is it just over Zoom or do you ever actually manage to get together and have a proper jam session as such? Or is it wait until you've got a certain amount of material to get together physically? I go, I go down to Devon fairly often, to be fair, probably, right. probably at least once a month. I'll get old nip down, but uh, sometimes more than that. And, but as far as songwriting goes, I don't think we've ever at any point done it in a room together. I don't think we've ever sort of gone, try this, try that. In, in a way that I have always done before in like, I say, more classic rock bands and stuff. It's like, oh, try this riff and stuff like that. Because our music, in, it's like we get down to like the molecular level of some of these songs. So it's, we map it out in like MIDI and it's like oh, okay and, they, and you know just working it out basically like a almost like a maths equation sometimes when we're around at John's um but yeah we we do the writing mostly just just like this and um and then when we've got like certain amount of demo enough to sort of okay we've got verses choruses and things like that then I can sit down and I'll, I'll sort of go through some lyrics and then we'll throw those around and then we'll try bits and put bits and bobs in but it's never it's never like the same old it's never the same formula. It always works a little bit differently, but it's not, it's not, yeah, we don't do it in a room together and we don't sort of like, okay, try this and try wailing some words over this bit and that sort of thing. We, um, we have quite a, a fairly decent structure down, but you've got to be prepared to know that that structure might change or sort of say will change at some point. So. <laughs> Did you find that like a challenge then moving from, uh, you know, your previous outfits where you were in the more traditional setting of sitting in a room and jamming like you were just saying? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's just something I've not done before, so it's like unfamiliar territory. So um, to me, I'd normally get the would get the guys together in a room and I'd be like, I've got an idea. Because I never would, I'd never go in without an idea. I've got some, you know, some kind of riff or something. Um, and then we just sort of develop it and sort of get like an, an organic sort of yeah, natural so progression sort of thing for a song. But um, no, with this, it's kind of like we 
sit back and okay, we've got a certain thing we want to say, or like with Gallows, for example, mm. it was an it's an aggressive song because instead of instead of the oh I feel really sad about this or whatever, Dan wanted to go with I'm angry about it. Like it's yeah, uh, naturally, yeah, you know one of those one of those emotions that you you get I suppose when you get that sort of news. So. Well, we, I know when I, my dad got diagnosed with it, I was pissed off with the whole world. So, yeah, I can completely yeah. understand that. Yeah. On it. yeah, totally, mate. And um, it's, it, yeah, it's one of those. So we also want the music to match that as well. So we want the music to be a little bit chaotic and a bit messed up because that's how the, his feelings were at the time yeah. as well. So we, yeah, we try to make not just the lyrics, but the music reflects the message we're trying to, to, uh, to put out. Yeah, it's good. And it's good to know. That, um, please pass my best on the down, mate. It's good to know that he's keeping well these days. Yeah, we'll do, mate. That's yeah, good to know. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, you're releasing another single off the album, aren't you? Uh, we've spoken about it. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if there's any official word on it yet, but um, potentially, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought I saw a post saying you were, so... <laughs> I might have missed it. Then We might well be. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought I saw something saying that you're releasing River, but I could be wrong then. Uh, oh, that, mm, no. I'm not going to say anything. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> it's all right. We'll edit that bit out. <laughs> and uh, next month, though, you're also going to hit in the road. You're going on the road with Stonebroken and uh, Mason Hill. Yeah, well, it's now later this month. Yeah, we're now in yeah. April. Oh, so yeah, we're in April. Yeah, now. yeah, we're in April now. So, um, which has come around quick. It's the most, probably the most post postponed tour in rock, I think. <laughs> I think it's been shifted about four times due to yeah, COVID and everything, but... Yeah, looking forward to that. It's um, Stonebroken, Mason Hill and ourselves all over the UK. So going as far up as Glasgow, I think, and far down as Exeter and Brighton and Cardiff and all that. So, yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah, well, I'm coming to the Norwich Day, man. So I'll see you guys on the scene there when you... Uh, oh, sweet, mate. See you there then. Cool. Yeah, dude, I was, um, I was chatting to Rich about it the other day. I got an um, interview with Rich Moss to, to air and he was saying, yeah, but the same thing you just said is the most... Uh, you know, delay Tory, I think he's ever organised. So um, literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of the things. I think everyone, I think he said, yeah, I'm sure he said it was like four times now it's been delayed or something. Yeah, so I think he had um, Phil XX, Phil X, didn't he, of uh, Bon Jovi's side. Bon Jovi. yeah. yeah, which would have been cool. Uh, it's cool that Mason Hill's joining us now as well. All, oh, like yeah. an all, Br all British lineup and all that. So that's going to be really cool. Would have been nice to have seen Phil X because he's uh, an absolute animal on the guitar. But um, yeah, I think that's one good thing that's, there's missing from a lot of tours actually is um this is an all british sort of like lineup it's like that doesn't happen a lot on these nice. size these size tours it's like normally you'd get this is usually be an american headliner or something and then a band like us support or something like that so it's it's cool that every, everyone from and we're all from different corners of the uk as well it's like you've got the mason hill from scotland you've got uh you know stone broken from the midlands or um, i don't want to say birmingham but i'm sure it's around there yeah and the other yeah, I think that's it. And then uh, the rest of the guys from Devon, and then just a little of me from near Sheffield. So, yeah. <laughs> Get spread across the country, mate. Yeah, that's it. And uh, you also got um, a few dates lined up for the festival side of things. I know you're playing Heretic Fest, uh, which is so that looks like a brilliant lineup organised by Hannah. Yeah, Hannah's done a, an awesome job putting that together. I mean, that, that's again, that's probably the most postponed <laughs> festival I think I've ever ever been a part of because the addiction, my old band was supposed to be on that lineup as well. Yeah, of course you were, yeah. Yeah, so we was we were supposed to be playing the Sunday, I think, like originally. And um and now I've been I've been with the Fallen State getting on two years. <laughs> like it's getting wow. on that way. Like um not well unofficially, but I started getting involved with the band sort of May 2020. So we're getting towards two years so by the time the festival comes around actually it will be two years it will be, yeah. um so yeah but that's gonna be cool that's um it's an awesome lineup i mean again with stone broken again with us on that day so um but yeah that's that's gonna be cool and it's quite close to me as well so it's the other lads that's got to do all the traveling i can go home <laughs> that night so it's okay you can go home to your own bed that night for a chance that's right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, that's like a killer lineup mate i mean obviously um i got to know hannah quite well talk, talking through you know festival to festival between Just Push Play and, and Heretic Fest and uh, we were fortunate that Just Push Play happened two three weeks after everything got lifted back up again last year and poor Hannah was the other side of that she was two three weeks before everything thingy because yeah. she was saying to me like Lee, Lee I think you might have to pull it again and I'm like I don't know I don't know I've already had to pull it one year I don't want to do it again if I don't have to and we were fortunate but uh, yeah I felt for her on that one because 
it was bad enough having to move just to play a, a year once. That was yeah, a lot of late yeah. nights and a lot of phone calls. But uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, and then, I, get it, I get it. Like it's same for the tours as well. Is like yeah, I can imagine. Previous, like previously, I've um, I've helped booked a tour for a good friend of mine now, Marco Mendoza and stuff. And uh, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's just like trying to organize that, and it's like cancelled. And it's like you know, it's like you have to start again with some of it because yeah. it's like no, it's just cancelled. We're not going to rebook a date until we know what's going to happen. And it's just like ugh. it's no one's really to blame because it's like the venues need to know that a show is going to happen to go ahead to guarantee someone's yeah, going to get paid, and the bands need to know that a show is going to happen so they can plan what they're going to do and where they're going to do it. And it's 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 yeah, it's been a real mess for the last couple of years. But things look like they're getting sort of on track now, tour wise and stuff. So. Yeah, it does look like. I mean, I think I think there's still a little bit of debate for sort of international artists, uh, yeah, certain areas. But yeah, for in terms of you know, like you say, British bands doing a, a tour across the UK, I think we're fingers crossed for okay at the minute. So yeah, so, so. It's, um, but we've only, only got a couple of weeks until this tour, so I hope nothing happens in between now and then. Let's hope not, mate. Let's hope not. Um, Cancelled again. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Richard's uh, suffer a go round for a fifth time round. <laughs> Uh, so, other than the tour and obviously promoting the album, what, what, other, what else you guys got lined up in the future? You got um, to, any dates of your own other than the shows coming up with Stone Broken? Or? We will have. Uh, we're going out with Red for a few dates in October. Oh, nice. um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So that's Manchester, Oxford and London, I think. Um, and then it's sort of always around that time of year that the band sort of normally tours if we've got an album or something out. So hopefully... We'll get it, a guitar in around there, but it depends on other things. If a, another tour opportunity comes up with someone else or or whatever, but we're, yeah, hopefully this year at some point, probably again, like I say, later in the year, we'll get a, a headline tour out for the album. So yeah, that'd be good, man. Have you? You've not done any headline tour on the on the album yet, have you? Actually, because everything has been going on, and then actually you got Stone Broken dates. Yeah, yeah, not for the album. We did. We went out um, for. Oh, I was going to say ten days. It wasn't. It was eleven days and ten shows. Uh, so uh, yeah, we did that in October. So that was that was getting to the places that we couldn't go on this Stone Broken tour. So we got to places like, uh, I mean, the boys did an hometown show, but we got to like Plymouth and we did Edinburgh because we're doing Glasgow on this run. And oh, right, yeah. um, so we did the places that we couldn't really do um, on on this tour. And it was like my first tour with a band as well. So it was a bit of a sort of it wasn't a throwaway tour by any means. I don't mean that, but it was a, it was a, like a good chance to go out and not pressure that it's the album tour. Yeah, and make sure everyone gets you know to hear the album. So it was just like free album. Let's just get out on the road because no one's played for two years, um, and just see how it went. And it was great. So yeah, hopefully it'll be a even better this time around this month. Am I right thinking that was when you had? Did you have Dead Man's Whiskey Boys supporting you on that, or am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, we did. Yeah, Dead, Dead Man's Whiskey joined us. Yeah, it was good fun. Good boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had them at Just Push Play the other year. They they good too. So Nico's yeah. a absolute wind up merchant. So I'm sure he was a laugh. Yeah, the good fun. We we played it when we got to um, I think it was, yeah, it was in Peterborough, oh, yeah. and we went out. I went out to uh, went out to the the van, and um, we had a ticket on the front. I was like, oh no, like we haven't got a fine, have we? And as I got a bit closer, it said Leeds on it. I'm like, we're not. I was like, lads, where are we? Like, <laughs> not, we're not in Leeds, are we? And uh, so I picked up this fine packet. I was like. There's something in it, and I opened it up, and it's like you owe Dead Man's Whiskey one hundred pound, two hundred pound if not paid. And I was like, little bastards. Like, <laughs> Sounds like the boys. <laughs> yes, but I said actually the jokes on them because it says from Leeds, so they must have actually got a ticket. Yeah, so. they must have actually got a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice one. Oh, so well, I didn't realize you'd been organizing shows for Marco Mendoza. Though. How did you get involved in that? Have you played with them or something? Or yeah, so when I started the addiction. Yeah, um, we was like, okay, we've got a couple of singles like sort of ready to go. I think we'd released one, one or both of them. I can't remember. Um, and it was like, right, let's get straight out. Let's try and play some shows. Um, and I got hold of Marco because we'd played one show with him before in Doncaster. Oh, right. Um, and such a random place for Marco Mendoza to play. I know, right? Yeah, he's played some <laughs> random places, man. Um, well, some, of them, some of them are my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, yeah, so we got a hold of him. I was like, we've played a show with it before. Um, I know you're coming to the UK pretty soon. Can we, like, just jump on? So we don't want paying. Yeah. We'll help, like, provide backline and everything like that. So it makes it easier for you. Because that's what he likes to do, which is yeah. fair enough. Save the costs. Oh, well, yeah, getting okay. save stuff, getting everything over here and all hiring it when you're this side. Exactly, yeah. So it's, like, opportunity for us just to get out and play. 
we'll provide backline and, and all that sort of thing. And it was like, yeah, awesome, jump on it. So we went and did, I think, uh, seven or eight dates with him or something like that across nice. the UK. Um, and we just become really good friends. Like, we just, like, got on, like, house on fire. And we just, like, you know, we just... Um, I, I remember he rang me not too long after the whole COVID thing. He just rang me just to see if I hadn't got COVID. I'm like, oh, that's really sweet of you. Thank you. That's pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we just sort of kept in contact the whole time. And then he... Um, it just, it, bless him. I think he sometimes tried to check what time it was. And then I think he'd just forget or something. And then he'd ring it. Like, it'd be like three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, right, you know I do. And, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so it was like, yeah, I'm looking at coming over. Like, do you want to help us put some dates together and we'll go out again? I was like, yeah, sound. So, because I knew a lot of the promoters and guys over here, I was like, yeah, I'll take care of it sort of thing. And yeah, I put them together. So we had a short run that I put together. And then I started piecing together the one that got cancelled because of COVID. And yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't end up finishing all of that date, but um, yeah, it helps out there and there. So, but yeah, we've just been good mates really since we um, since we talked together. So he's a bit of a base hero of mine, so I'm pretty jealous. So I won't lie. He's incredible, man. Like he, we've got to uh, Edinburgh. We played a Bannermans with him, and like not just yeah. on bass, he's a really good guitarist as well. Mm. So he picked up this acoustic guitar and he just started playing uh, Rocky Raccoon Beatles oh, yeah. on my album. I'm just like incredible, and he just started singing it at my face. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One okay. of those surreal moments that happens in life. Yeah, it's like, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> I know those ones, we all have them. I remember um, a few years ago, my uh, wife, uh, brother plays drums, and at the time he was playing in a, an ACDC tribute band, and they got asked to do the after-show party for Steel House Festival at the O2 when that was on. Nice. And uh, it was literally like that morning. Um, it was a few years ago now before we were married and before we bought a place, so he came and knocked on Joe's room like when she was still living at home, and I'm like, he's like, can I talk to Lee? And I'm like, what's up James and he went um if you carry in my drums I can get you in to watch Alice Cooper tonight because Alice Cooper was headline nice. he went to love Alice Cooper and I was like fuck yeah I'll come to that <laughs> and um so we went down it was me Joe's brother and her dad and um we uh, went down helped James up he was in like the indigo room and we're helping him set up his kit and all that and then eventually we got handed into these passes like and it's you know off you go and come back at 11, obviously when the main show's over and, and James will be in here. I'm like, okay. And uh, we went to sort of the main entrance, which I didn't realise, because obviously I'd only, only ever gone to the O2 arena as, as a punter. Um, and I walked, we went to go walk through the main bit and the security's like, no, 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 you, you don't come in here. You need to go through gate A, because apparently the main one's gate B, which uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even have been there. I was just like, I don't, I don't care which gate I use, mate. Just, you know, am I actually allowed to in to watch bands or not? He's like, no, you need to go for that, and which was the which we didn't realise was the artist and press entrance. Oh, nice. So we were walking down, and it was a bit like the scene in Wayne's World. We were there, just sort of like, is this okay? Is this cool? Um, security let us through, and they were like looking at us weirdly because we were all stood there going, I don't know where the fuck to go for here. How do I get? <laughs> how do I get out? Um, and the security guy goes, "What's up, mate?" And I'm like, "Well, we want to watch the bands." And the time darkness were on stage, um, yeah. and he's like, "Well, just." keep going down the corridor you can't miss the stage and he was right because what i didn't realize because i was walking a bit ahead of uh, james and his dad charlie so i was sort of looking behind me talking to him going and i don't know it must be sort of down here somewhere and then i saw some steps and i just started climbing these steps and all of a sudden james and charlie go lee no 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 and i looked up and i realized i'm about to walk onto the back of the stage at the yeah, other yeah. <laughs> i could see sort of dan hawkins looking at the stage all going who's this guy walking up the stage? <laughs> <laughs> I was about six, eight feet away from just walking onto the back of the ice <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was a bit. That's cool, man. Also, I thought it was a bit scary after I had my dime bag, Daryl, that I was just allowed to wander that far. But uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you've got a pass, so yeah, just go for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> go. But yeah, it's, you know, I think yeah, it's one of those surreal moments in life, especially when we were still between the side of like the over the other side of the barrier but basically where the press pit would be we were sort of stood side of it yeah look around watch the rest of the darkness set sort of thing and the security guy's like oh did you want to come in <laughs> oh, okay i thought you know i was just going to go to the pub tonight and have a couple of pints and now i'm still in the press fast watching alice cooper so that's awesome man. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the rest of the year hold for you guys then man you got any plans of going into next year or um I don't know. Mostly it's, it's the touring stuff. So like I say, hopefully we're going to get, if not our own album tour, we, we've got to get that in at some point. But um, yeah. yeah, there's there's a couple of opportunities that we might do, you know, might take for, um, to, you know, go out and support other bands and stuff, which, which would be cool as well. 
Um, but yeah, we do want to get out on a headline tour. Um, and then next year, it's it's about more of the same sort of, I mean, we're probably going to be already balls deep into writing the next record by then yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, more tours, hopefully getting some uh, some festival slots and that sort of thing. And because I, I love doing the festivals, man, they're so cool. And um, and just, yeah, more of that, more more of the old grind sort of thing. Yeah. I was going to say, you've already got your sights set on the, the next album as it were, but I guess that will come once you've had a chance to promote this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's not it's nice actually. Now it's out, and, and like since it's been recorded, it's just like I haven't got to worry about it anymore. It's like in the sense of like it's written. I haven't got to worry about writing or recording or anything like that. Because <laughs> as much as I absolutely love it, it can be stressful. So, um, but it's, yeah, but at the same time, I wouldn't change it. So it's one of those. It's like I hate, ha- equally hate and love some of what you have to do, but it's um, yeah, it's awesome and already. Like this album's literally just come out a couple of weeks ago and already like, yeah, I kind of got some ideas and some songs I want to work on. So it's like, it's a bit of that. It's just like, uh, yeah, hate. Why is it? I can't think of the term, but yeah. Lo- loving your, I don't know, what, what's it called? Like Stockholm Syndrome or something like oh. that. Where you just, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, captured and you love, you love the person that's captured you sort of thing. And that's what I kind of feel with music sometimes. <laughs> It's good that it's coming, it's still coming through, you know what I mean? It's good that you, you know, you actually, like you say, you're working on these songs from 2020 onwards sort of thing. So it's good that that's yeah. not freezing up as it were. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just in, in everyone's DNA in this band. It's just like, yeah, we've done an album. It's like, there's more songs and there's stuff, there's ideas that we worked on that didn't make this record. And it's like, they're not necessarily dead in the water. There's, you know, potential that they might even creep onto the next record or, yeah, or maybe not. Work out but, this time around for whatever reason. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you you can only do so many songs and it's, you know, we didn't want to put 15 songs on there because I think I think the whole point of an album is it should be a collection of songs and make sense as, a, as an entity. I mean, I, so. I, I know we live in a, in a time where it's all about singles and stuff. I get that. But if you're going to put a record out, you're going to kind of got to do it on your own terms, I suppose. So we wanted it to be, we did 10 songs and we wanted it to be bang, bang, bang. That's that's the package and that's that's what you get with the album sort of thing rather than like just chucking 20 songs 20 songs on. I mean, I appreciate that and some bands do a good job of doing that but mm. for us, it was, yeah, just have 10 and make sure they're the best 10 that we can possibly do at the time. So I think that's it. I think sometimes, don't get wrong, there's plenty of bands that I love that have put out albums with 15, 16 songs on them but I think sometimes the albums that pack a bigger punch are the ones that got less on them. Like you say, yeah. you want every song being up here and if one dips, and it doesn't have to dip much, but if one's yeah. not, you know, if you, you, everything's up here and one's there, it just makes the whole album sort of drag a little bit rather than sort of an assault, as it were, of those 10 best ones. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's, yeah, I think there's um, I think there's a place for saying, okay, you've gone too far or, you know, or you, you're not presenting, like I say, if it was a single and you're just doing another song, yeah, you could release 15 singles, that's, that's absolutely fine. But if you point it out as one piece of art and one piece of work, then I think you should do it how you want like I say some bands might want to put 15 on that's fine as well yeah. if that's if that's what works for them um but we we thought if we can do 10 and absolutely use the same sort of energy and and everything put into every single song which I think we've done then we're going to get the results that we wanted and I think we did like every song is is so like meticulously thought of even if even if most people don't notice it because there's so much like going on in the songs underlying yeah. and things like that but um I think yeah, there's just so much gone into them. It's like, I don't know if we could put that effort into like 15 songs for one album. I don't know if we could, but that's maybe why we didn't do it. I don't know. But um, yeah, I like the way we've done it. I like that it's 10 songs. I think that's quite a, a reasonable number for an album. And um, all of them have had good care and attention to get them where they are. So, Well, as a, just as a listener, mate, I don't you think you totally nailed it, to be honest. Thanks, man. No, no worries. Um, here in the, 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 you know, the next chapter, as it were, for you guys. And it's like I say, it's it's ten songs. It's storming from front to back. It doesn't dip. It was a, a proper soul. Like I say, it's more more heavy in places, more aggressive in places. But equally, yeah. there are different light and shade on it, which is really cool. And yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Norwich and seeing these tunes live, man. Yeah, looking forward to seeing them. Mate. Yeah, I've not been to. Uh, no, we played. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Norwich. It was Yarmouth, Great Yarmouth. So it's out oh, that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we that, played yeah. the Hard Rock. Yeah played the Hard Rock L Festival out there and the, towards the end of last year. So, but yeah, I've never played Norwich, so I'll be, I'll be a new one. Um, are you upstairs in the waterfront or are you downstairs in the waterfront, do you know? I don't know. Um, <laughs> they, they never even tell the audience, to be fair. There's gigs, because there's two rooms. There's upstairs, which is probably about 800, 900 cap. Yeah. And then downstairs is about 1,500. 
Right. You never tend to know until you get there and they just yeah. sort of point right the gigs upstairs tonight, sort of things. So it's just yeah. it's yeah, weird. I, mean, uh, I don't know myself. I don't know if it I don't even know if Stone Broken know up to now. I think it, it might just be a case of ticket sales, I don't know. If it sold yes. more than the capacity of the smaller room, it might be the big one. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, last time I saw Stone Broken, we was downstairs. So I imagine you guys would be downstairs. Yeah. Either way, I mean, it's a great setup down there. I mean that's why I, that's where I was with the uni, so Oh, sweet. So, was that their tour as well, Stone Broken? Yes. Yeah, yeah well, I thought it was them when they had, they had uh, Crows and, and Holostar open up for them on that one. So Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like, I imagine then it's probably going to be that one. But yeah, I've not heard anything official on that yet. Anyway, so. <laughs> no worries. Uh, but well, thanks for your time, man. It's been great to talk to you, buddy. Yeah, all good, man. Thanks for having us on. It's been uh, great catching up. I'll have to not leave it so long next time. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, just one final thing, dude. Uh, we're going to play Standing Tall at the beginning of the interview because it's probably my favourite off the album. Awesome. Uh, uh, what song off the album would you like us to play at the end of the interview, mate? Um, it might be a long player, so I don't know if you want to do it, but Mirror, because it's potentially my favourite off the album up to now. So. I'm happy to play a long player, man. That's, awesome, that's a man. great song as well, Mirror. I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, definitely look at that one. In. Thanks, man. Yeah, just it's well different to the rest, you know, because it's like it's like six and a half minutes or whatever. It is. The rest are always all about three minutes, 20, three minutes, 30, <laughs> but... So it's like all oh, those extra extra long, but it's um yeah, I'm super proud about that to turn out. It's such a cool song. So yeah. So yeah, mirror would be cool. Thanks, man. No, man, we'll go with that. Well, speak to you soon, no doubt, dude. And uh, if we get the opportunity, we'll have a beer in Norwich. Yeah, let's do that, man. Nice one. Catch you soon. Cheers, bud.